Hallelujah. Lift your hand to heaven, everybody, and begin to give God thanks, celebrating Him this morning, giving Him the glory, the honor, the adoration that is due unto His name. Lift your hand and your voices and thank Him for the privilege of being in His presence. Give, give Him thanks and give Him praise. Give Him thanks and give Him praise. We celebrate you, Jesus. You are worthy of all the praise and of all the glory, of all the honor, of all the adoration. Now begin to ask him to speak to you today. He has called you into this presence on this covenant day of vengeance. Lord, avenge me today by your word. Avenge me today as your word is coming forth. Father, thank you. Blessed be your holy name. In the precious name of the Lord Jesus, we are praying. Father, we thank you this morning for the privilege we have to be here in your presence again. We thank you because we know that you have brought us here for a blessing. Let everyone depart your presence with that blessing today. And above all, every siege upon every life, we decree that today marks the end of it. Speak clearly in our direction and change our levels. In Jesus' precious name, we are praying. Give Jesus a big hand and please you may be seated in his presence. My case is different because... Congratulations. We began looking all through the Sundays of this month at this series of teachings entitled Engaging the Power of Revelation for Our Exemption. Engaging the Power of Revelation for Our Exemption. And today in particular, being our covenant day of vengeance, we shall be engaging the revelation of the God of vengeance for our exemption. Engaging the revelation of the God of, of vengeance for our exemption. It's important for us to understand that each one needs a full revelation of God in order to enjoy his full manifestation in our lives. In Ephesians 1, 17, the Bible says, I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, will give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him or to know him. Because he's a God of many sides. He's a God of two major dimensions. In Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 39, the Bible tells us this about God. It says, see now that I, even I am he, and there is no God with me. I kill and I make a life. I wound and I heal. There is none that can deliver from my hand. It is that God that you have come to meet this morning. And whoever is after your life, after your destiny, after your family, the God from whom no one can deliver from his hand will fight on your behalf. I thought you believed you'd be shouting a louder, amen. Yeah. Now, why invoke vengeance? Let's begin from the beginning. Why do we need to invoke vengeance? Number one is that our God is a God of vengeance. Say with me, my God is a God of vengeance. Louder like you mean it, my God is a God of vengeance. In Psalm chapter 7, Psalm, um, Romans chapter 12, sorry, and verse 19. Romans 12 and verse 19. He said, vengeance is mine and I will repay. In Psalm chapter 94 and verse 1. Oh God, to whom vengeance belongeth. Oh God, to whom vengeance belongeth, show thyself. Our God is a God of vengeance. God's servant, our father, calls it the other side of God. 
Our God is a God of vengeance. Some time ago, somebody met me in London and asked me a question. He said, Pastor, if our God is a good God, then how can he also be a God of vengeance? And I asked him, if this country is a good country, how come it has prison? Because there are elements that must be punished. There are elements that must be judged. And the God of vengeance will fight on your behalf today. Have you ever noticed that there is no civilized nation without prison, without capital punishment? Vengeance is the capital punishment of the kingdom. That is God punishing the wicked. The Bible said God is angry with the wicked every day. And the anger of God will answer on your behalf today. I thought somebody believing will be shouting a louder amen. Yeah. Romans chapter 11 and verse 22. The Bible said, Behold the goodness and the severity of God. God is very good, but God is very severe. And that severity of God will answer against your enemies in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Number two, why do we invoke vengeance? Because Jesus taught us to pray vengeance prayers. Chapter 18 and verse 1. He said, men ought always to pray and not to faint. What are they praying about continuously? Look at verse 3. And that widow said, avenge me of my adversary. And then verse 7 and verse 8 of the same scripture. The Bible tells us, and shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them. He said he will avenge them speedily. Jesus taught us to pray prayers of vengeance. We just heard the testimony this morning of one of our sisters went home to see the father and there was a contention over inheritance and they had told the father that all of his children have been numbered they'll be dying one by one and that one of them was on the way and when she got there visited the father said no heard that it was covenant day of vengeance and heard that god is a killer god not only a healer god but a killer god he said i am he i kill i make a life I wound and I heal. There is no God with me and none can deliver out of my hand. By the time she went home, engaged with the God of vengeance and heard from the world that there is no, that don't go to sleep because you are going to hear news this night. And as she stood awake, praying the vengeance prayer that this Jesus taught us to pray, by the time it was 12 o'clock in the night, Jehovah has collected the oxygen of the wicked man. Now hear this. Whoever is after your life, after your destiny, their oxygen shall be collected. Number three. Number three. Why do we invoke vengeance? For, the ta for termination of wickedness. For termination of wickedness. The Bible says in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verse 11. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verse 11. He said, because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, therefore the heart of the sons of men is set in them to do evil. In other words, wickedness multiplies when judgment is absent. That's why vengeance. That's why vengeance. That's why vengeance. The reason we are not only praying for your escape today, but praying for vengeance is because the wickedness of the wicked must come to an end. In other words, not only must we escape, but they must never have another opportunity for wickedness. Shout hallelujah. I said shout hallelujah. In Psalm chapter 7, verse 9 down to verse 13, look at what the scripture says. Oh, let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end, but establish the just... For the righteous God tried the heart and the reins. He said in verse 10, My defense is of God, which saved the upright in heart. And verse 11, He said, God judged the righteous, and God is angry with the wicked every day. And verse 12, He said, If he turn not, he will wet his sword. He, will, he has bent his bow, and he has made it ready. And verse 13, He has also prepared for him the instruments of death. He has ordained his arrows against the persecutors. 
I have good news for you. The instruments of death are prepared against every persecutor of your destiny. When God sets a day like this, what he's simply saying is that the expiry date for every such persecutor has finally come. Look at what that scripture said. He said, if he turn not, if he turn not, then he will wet his word. God has given them enough opportunity to turn. Now that we have arrived at the 12th day of February, which is our covenant day of vengeance, their time is up on the earth. Somebody believe it, say louder, amen. amen. Number four, why do we invoke vengeance? For release from bondage. For release from bondage. For 430 years, Egypt kept Israel in bondage. Everything that could have happened in terms of signs and wonders took place. But when vengeance came, Pharaoh gave up. When vengeance came, Pharaoh gave up. I don't know what seemed to have defied other solutions. You have tried other things, but it looks like it has not turned. When the key of vengeance is invoked, the devil is forced to give up. So vengeance is for the establishment of our release. That means that for everyone under the sound of my voice this morning, today, Marks your release from bondage. I said today, marks your release from bondage. And the release is not temporary. Because as soon as they departed from Israel, from Egypt, Pharaoh gathered his choicest men and his choicest chariots and began to pursue after them. But God's release policy is a permanent one. They followed them through the Red Sea and God buried every Egyptian and speared every Israelite in that same Red Sea. I'd like you to understand this morning that that same God of vengeance will be destroying all of your adversaries. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Number five, we cannot be exempted from horror until judgment comes against a source. It is when the source is judged that horror is escaped. When the source is judged, that is when horror can be escaped. Remember Ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verse 11? He said, because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. He said, therefore the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. So there must be a sentence of judgment. Because that judgment is what brings an end to horror. I see every horror coming to an end in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody believe it, say a louder amen. I said somebody believe it, say a louder amen. Based on this, it's important for us to understand that it is your redemptive right to cause every source of satanic oppression. It is your redemptive right to cause every source of satanic oppression. In the book of Mark chapter 11, verse 19 to 23, Jesus caused the fig tree and the fig tree withered from the root. And the Bible tells us there that when the disciples looked at him in awe, he said, if you have faith in your heart and you say to any mountain that is mocking you like this fig tree, be removed and be cast into the sea and you doubt not in your heart, he said, then you will have whatsoever you say. So we are ordained by God to cause the root and the source of every satanic oppression and affliction. Everything that represents a satanic oppression and affliction of the devil in any department of your life, the cause of God will answer against it today. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's important for us to know also that we are in the last days. These days are called the days of the vengeance of our God. In the book of Isaiah chapter 61, we see there, beginning from verse 1 and verse 1 to verse 3, it says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me, verse 1. He said, to preach the gospel. And then verse 2, among the effects of the Spirit of God, he said, is to proclaim the acceptable year of God and the day of the vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn in Zion. 
Until vengeance comes, comfort is not instituted. Therefore, whatever is required, whoever must go for your comfort to be restored will go on your behalf in the name of Jesus. I said, whoever must go for your comfort to be restored will go on your behalf in the name of Jesus. One of us last year here at the Faith Tabernacle was to get married. Rejoicing, gathered together for the wedding and the best friend of the bride came for that wedding. Upon arrival, wedding went on and this best friend came to poison the food that would be eaten at the reception. But the God of vengeance arose on the behalf of that couple and on the spot that friend ran mad and began confessing that I came here to poison the food at the reception in order to kill the couple, to kill every guest that was rejoicing with them. In other words, it was the anger of the wicked to see the joy of the righteous. Now hear this. Whoever is angry at your joy, the God of vengeance will arise against them today. Now, having seen that, it's important for us to recognize that as a child of God, you are ordained to be untouchable. Say with me, I'm ordained to be untouchable. Come on, like you mean it, I am ordained to be untouchable. In Psalm 105, verse 13 to 15, the scripture tells us there, when they went from one nation to another, from one kingdom to another people, he suffered no man to do them wrong. Yea, he reproved kings for their sakes, saying, touch not my anointed, and do my prophet no harm. These are the children of God. He said, you are not permitted to touch them. They were going from place to place, but they went as unharmable entities. From today, no wicked man, wicked woman, agent of the devil shall come near you to touch you. Now, Zechariah chapter 12 and verse 3. Look at what the Bible says here. It says here, it said, And in that day I will make Jerusalem a burdensome stone to all people that burden themselves with it. They will be cut to pieces. He said, though all the people of the earth should gather against it. What God is simply saying there, I will, that is anyone that uses you as a subject of his imagination to do evil. He said, I've turned you into a body, some stone. You know the stone they used to grind pepper. He said, I've turned you to a pepper grinding stone. You will grind them. You will cut them to pieces. You will destroy them. Somebody believe it, say louder, amen. Say with me, by redemption, I am untouchable. By redemption, I am untouchable. You and I both know, you and I both know, that any pepper that reaches a pepper grinding stone will change in form. It will go from solid to substance that is liquid because the stone cuts it to pieces and grinds it to powder. From today, that becomes your own testimony. Anyone that considers you for evil, with the God of vengeance will arise against them on your behalf. Number two, you must recognize that as a child of God, you are uncursable. Say with me, I'm uncursable. Louder with me, I'm uncursable. <laughs> Numbers chapter 23 and verse 23. The Bible says, there is no enchantment against Jacob. There is no, div there is no divination against Israel. According to this time, it shall be said of Jacob and of Israel, what has God wrought? There is no enchantment. You are uncursable. Why? Because you and I are spiritual Israelites. 
Romans chapter 2, chapter 2 and verse 29. He's not a Jew that is one outwardly, but a Jew that is one inwardly. So you and I are spiritual Israelites. Therefore, we are untouchable and uncursable. It means that no one can make incantation with your name and go scot-free. <laughs> By redemption. You must walk in the consciousness of this revelation. No one can take your name to any mountain for any quell prophet to put a curse upon you because you are uncursable by redemption. Say with me, I'm uncursable by redemption. No, but there are important things that must be done in order to engage the God of vengeance. Seven things, we'll look at them quickly. Number one, you must be born again. You must be born again. You must be born again until you are a partaker of redemption. You cannot be a partaker of exemption. It takes redemption to enjoy exemption. And it is exemption that positions for judgment. You must be born again. In Exodus chapter 4, and verse 22 and verse 23. He said, And thou shalt say to Pharaoh, Thus said the Lord, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. He said, Let my son go that he may serve me. If thou refuse, I will slay thy son, even thy first son. So you must be his son first. And before you can become his son, you must be born again until you are a partaker of redemption you cannot be a partaker of exemption so it starts at the place of salvation in colossians chapter 1 verse 13 the bible puts it this way it said there who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us unto the kingdom of his dear son so it is redemption that exempts you from the power of darkness Paul put it this way in the book of Acts chapter 26 and verse 18. He said there, he said, to open their eyes, to turn them, this is what happens in salvation, from darkness to light, from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of their sins. So very clearly, it is redemption that converts you from the place where you are a victim of the oppressions of the enemy. It takes redemption. So the first and most important key is you must be born again. 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 There are people who ask from time to time, well, pastor, how come? Yes, I'm not yet born again, and yet I have not yet begun to see all kinds of evil around my life. Now, hear this, I hear it very well. When Christmas is coming, the chicken for Christmas is being fed consistently. It may think it is enjoyment, but it's only preparation for slaughter. <laughs> Anyone that is not born again, whatever looks like good around him, Satan is only preparing him for slaughter. The only way of escape is salvation. It says in Hebrews chapter 2 verse 3, it says, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? I see you escaping. <laughs> Number two, believe in the ministry of the God of vengeance. Believe it. Believe in the ministry of the God of vengeance. It says in the book of 1 John chapter 5 and verse 4, whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world, but this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. So it takes faith to walk in victory over wickedness and to enjoy vengeance over the enemy. In Psalm chapter 7, verse 9 down to verse 13, we we'll take it again. It says, Oh, let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end. He said, But establish the just. And it goes on to say, God is angry with the wicked every day. So we have a God of vengeance. You must believe in his ministry. You must do what? Believe in the ministry of the God of vengeance. Believe in it. It is faith that provokes the manifestation of God on our behalf. It is faith 
that provokes the manifestation of God on our, on our behalf. It is faith that provokes the manifestation of God on our behalf. Believe in the ministry of the God of vengeance. In one of our churches in Abuja, we had an awesome testimony come during the week. One of these, an individual came into the church last week Sunday. He was mad for 35 years. Entered into the service. And as the word of God was coming, suddenly he came back to himself. And looked at himself. And for the first time discovered he was unclean. He had been eating his excreta for 35 solid years. And suddenly, he said, Lord, who is behind this affliction? And God told him, it's your father. He couldn't believe it. But suddenly, knowing the God that he has come to encounter, I believe faith must have risen in his heart. And by Wednesday of the week, he was healed on Sunday. Wednesday of the week, the father suddenly collapsed and died. We serve a God of vengeance. Believe in his ministry. That this is important if you are going to enjoy his manifestation on your behalf. Why is that so? Because the wickedness of the wicked will increase without vengeance being released. But today is that day where the vengeance of the Almighty will answer on your behalf in the name of Jesus. I said today is that day where the vengeance of the Almighty will answer on your behalf in the name of Jesus. Some years ago, when a service like this, a covenant day of vengeance in our church in London, and somebody was there, one of our dignesses in the church. I never knew, but there was somebody in the family, a strong man in that family, who names people who will die next. Every year, he names a person. This one is to die next. That one is to die next. This one is to die next. And as he says it, he begins to see it happen. And in that service, a declaration was made that according to the word of God, that in this very moment, as God's word is going, the judgment of God is landing in the camp of the enemy. She shouted amen from the depth of her heart. Before the service concluded, a text message landed in her phone. The man back home suddenly just died out of nowhere. Because the God of vengeance answered on her behalf. She heard the word, she believed it, and she shouted amen. Amen means let it be so. And right there, in another country, the strong man was cut down. That God of vengeance will answer for you today. I said that God of vengeance will answer for you today. That God of vengeance will answer for you today. Number three. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> One of the operations of the Holy Spirit is the invocation of vengeance. It says in the book of John chapter 16 and in verse 11, beginning from verse 8, he began to tell us about the ministry of the Holy Ghost. And look at verse 11. It tells us there, it said, and of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. He will reprove the world. He will reprove the world. And of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. So part of the operation of the Holy Ghost is to execute judgment against the adversary. Shout hallelujah. So when you are baptized in the Holy Ghost, it's not just speaking in tongues. No. You are flowing in mysteries for the destruction of the wicked. For the destruction of the wicked. Now here it is. You can't know where the wicked is hiding. You can't even identify all of the wicked by sight. But there is a spirit that dwells in the redeemed. The spirit that baptizes you in the Holy Ghost. As you begin to speak in that language, God is addressing all of the wicked wherever they are found. And he's destroying them one by one. Remember this. 
the Bible makes us to understand that the Spirit of God helps our infirmity. For we know not what to pray as we ought to, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that knows the mind of God, he said, he knows what is in the heart of the Spirit. So he prays for us as we are engaging. We are simply uttering what the Holy Spirit is saying. And hear this. The voice of God is the secret to the destruction of the wicked. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 8. The Bible says there. He said, when that wicked shall be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the spirit of his mouth, and, with the, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. When you are praying in the spirit, it is the spirit of God in you that is uttering those words and releasing them through you. And when his words are coming forth, he said he will destroy the wicked with the spirit of his mouth. I see the spirit of God in this season destroying the wicked on your behalf. Somebody believe it, say it louder, amen. I said somebody believe it, say it louder, amen. Somebody believe it, say the loudest, amen. In Acts chapter 13, beginning from verse 9, verse, verse 19, verse 9 and 10, Acts 13, verse 9 and 10, the Bible says, Then Saul, who is called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, he set his eye on Elibas the sorcerer. And he said, O thou child of the devil, enemy of all righteousness, will thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? He said, now the hand of the Lord is upon you. You will not see the sun for a season. How did he say it? He said, Paul, being filled with the Holy Ghost, he looked at him and said, we are in the era of vengeance and the Holy Ghost is the principal agent for you and I for the execution of that vengeance. I see the vengeance of the Lord via the Holy Ghost being executed on your behalf in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Number four, demand for it on the altar of prayer. 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 Luke chapter 18 and verse 1, the scripture says, men ought always to pray and not to faint. And then verse 3, he said, this woman went to the judge continuously, saying, avenge me of my adversary. And what was he talking about there? He was talking about the subject of prayer. Verse 7 and verse 8, he goes on to tell us there. He says, shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry unto him night and day? He said, though he bear with them long, he will avenge them speedily. So we must understand that there is a demand for us to make a cry on the altar of prayer. Make a cry on the altar of prayer. Anyone that is behind your affliction, you settle down with God and utter a cry to God. Lord, let vengeance answer against the enemies. Shout hallelujah. Let vengeance answer against the enemy. You see, you must understand the need for issuing a cry. A cry. When the enemy was, seemed to be in dominion over Israel, the Bible says in the book of Ex Exodus chapter 3, God said, verse 7 and verse 8 there, he said, I have surely seen the affliction and I have heard their cry and because of that, I've come down. So it is the cry of the saints that invokes the God of vengeance. And God has promised, he said, not only will he come, but he will avenge us speedily. There shall be speedy vengeance. I said there shall be speedy vengeance. I said there shall be speedy vengeance. I said there shall be speedy vengeance. Against every adversary, there shall be speedy vengeance. In the name of Jesus Christ. Number five, make bold declarations and this is very vital make bold declarations it says in the book of acts chapter 14 verse 3 long time about this speaking boldly in the lord who gave testimony to the word of his grace and granted signs and wonders to be done speaking boldly it does not not just speaking but speaking boldly 
Speaking boldly. Speaking with authority. Speaking with audacity. I remember some years ago, somebody called a young man in our church in London, just about 22, 22, 23 years old. They called him and said, this occultic man has made a sentence and he said, you will die. He didn't hesitate. As soon as they ended, they said, go back and tell him that I said within seven days, his first son is dead. And if he does not turn, seven days from then, he also is buried. Return and tell him that. Somebody who looked like a serious or quantic man, a strong man, somebody that nobody seemed to have, be able to address, a 22-year-old redeemed child of God, open fire against him. You see, when a man is holding a gun, don't consider his age. It's the bullet you consider. Your tongue is the trigger for the power of God. So open your mouth wide and God said, I will feel it. I will feel it. I will feel it. I will feel it. You open your mouth and you begin to make address against the wicked. You begin to issue sentences. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah chapter 54, verse 16 and verse 17, look at what it says. It says, Behold, I've created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire and bringeth forth the instrument of his work. And I've created the waster to destroy. He said, No weapon formed against you shall prosper. He said, And every tongue that rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. Who is he talking about? He said, this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And their righteousness is of me, said the Lord. Did you hear what God said there? He said, I am the one who created the smith that blows the coals. I created the waster to destroy. I am also the one guaranteeing you that no weapon formed against you will prosper. And any tongue that rises up against you, whatever you utter will be their own outcome. What God is simply saying is this. The charm maker that is making the charm, I made him. The one who requested the charm in order to harm you, I also made him. The materials they try to gather together to make the charm, I made it. Now, I am the one telling you that no weapon formed against you shall prosper and every tongue rise against you in judgment he said you shall condemn i like you this morning i want you today not to be satisfied with escape drive to vengeance god said i guarantee your escape but you utter the vengeance in other words he said there he said you will condemn condemnation there talks about sentencing when a person goes to court the judge says this one has been condemned to death the condemnation there is the judgment God says now concerning the sentence that will land upon the wicked you are the one to make the judgment you issue the judgment I'd like you to know there must be death penalty how many are going to issue death penalty for every wicked agent of the devil after any one of us after anyone connected to us death penalty is issued against them that's why God's servant and father has told us over and over a closed mouth is a closed destiny a closed mouth is a closed destiny don't keep silent. Open your mouth wide. Psalm 81 verse 10 to 13. And I will feel it. If they have hacked to me, I would, have be, I, would, I would have beaten their enemies. Open your mouth wide. Don't keep silent. Don't keep silent. Don't pity the wicked. No. Don't pity the wicked. Don't pity the wicked. You can't be at the war front and feeling sorry for the enemy. No way. As long as you are on the other side, I'm against you. That should be the mentality of battle. You don't sit down on your own side of the battle line and start wondering, I wonder how they are feeling. <laughs> the better they feel, the better for you. It is your task to open fire against the enemy. 
today as you utter judgment, God will confirm it. Number, five, number six, commit to serving God. Commit to serving God. Commit to serving God. Exodus chapter 4 and verse 23. He said there, verse 22 and 23. He said there, Israel is my son, my firstborn. He said, let my son go wide that he may serve me. If you refuse to let him go, I will slay thy son. Let him go that he may serve me. So a choice to serve is a choice that positions you to be a partaker of exemption and judgment. Judgment answers on the behalf of servants. Judgment answers. If you look at the scripture that we just read in Isaiah chapter 54, look at the end of verse 17. He said there, this is the heritage of the servants of God. The servants of God. Those who are committed to serving God have an heritage that whatever they say against the wicked must stand. Therefore, because of your choice to serve God and those who are going to be making the choice today, I see every statement you issue against the wicked being established in the name of Jesus. You know why it is so? Now, even in a civil society, you discover that it is a judge that is employed by the state or the nation in service to the nation that can issue judgment. If you have a judge retired, he cannot judge again. It takes active service to have capacity for judgment. A judge that is retired, no more sitting, no more serving, cannot issue judgment. His opinion is irrelevant. No matter how high he has been in service, once he retires from serving, his opinion is not necessary on any matter, no matter how little. But a judge that is sitting on the judgment seat, is, you, you can be younger than him as long as he's serving on that seat. He has authority to make judgment. In the same vein, until a child of God is serving, is not sitting on the judgment seat. And it therefore does not have the authority required to be able to issue condemnation against the enemy. Therefore, today for everyone serving God and making the choice for it, I see every statement uttered today being enforced by heaven in the name of Jesus. And you know the good news? A judge simply utters, the nation executes. In the same vein, a servant simply utters, and then the kingdom of God, enthroned by God himself, executes. It doesn't matter who has been against you. <laughs> he said, who can deliver out of my hand? That God who said, who can deliver out of my hand, is the one executing judgment on your behalf. <laughs> Finally, number seven. Commit to celebrating the God of vengeance. You celebrate him. You praise him. You rejoice before him. As you are celebrating the God of vengeance, he answers against your adversaries. In Psalm chapter 149, verse 7 down to verse 10, he said, let the two, let, he said, he said to ex, verse, verse 6, he said, let the high praise of God be in their mouth and the two edges sword in their hand to execute vengeance against the heathen and punishment against the people. And we saw that practically executed on behalf of Judah in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 17 down to verse 24. Suddenly they appointed singers and they began to praise him and celebrate him. And God laid ambushment against the adversaries. So celebrate the God of vengeance and you will see him arise on your behalf. The good news for you today is that the God of vengeance has chosen this day to answer on your behalf. Therefore, as you put his word to work, as you have seen today, you will see speedy execution of vengeance against the enemy. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, so shall it be in Jesus' precious name. Lift your hand to heaven and give God thanks for his word. 
appreciate him, glorify him, stretch your hand to heaven and glorify him for his word. Father, thank you. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. This morning, if you are here, you have not surrendered your life to Jesus. You are not yet born again. You have not yet become a child of God. That is the first step. Until you do so, you are not a candidate yet to enjoy the God of vengeance answering on your behalf. Wherever you are, therefore, I'd like you to quickly rise on your feet. You want to surrender your life to Jesus? You want to make him the Lord and Savior of your life? You want to have a new beginning with him? Quickly rise on your feet right now. All over this place. God bless you. God bless you. Rise on your feet. Let nothing hold you back. Rise on your feet. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your holy name. Also, there are those who are here who need to rededicate their lives to Jesus. They are not, you are not fully connected to him. Something is out of touch. Yes, you may, be, you may, still, be, you may, you may still have activity, but you lack connectivity. Partial contact. It will always yield a low current. But today you want to establish full contact. You want to rededicate, recommit, reconnect your life to Jesus. Also quickly rise on your feet right now. Rise on your feet. God bless you. Rise on your feet. God bless you. Give Jesus a big hand, everybody. It's worthy of praise. Hallelujah. If you have responded to the first and second call, please move to the aisle closest to you, and I'll be praying for you from right there. Move to the aisle closest to you, and you'll be prayed for from there. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You can give that hand again to Jesus, the Savior, the Deliverer, the Rescuer, the God of vengeance himself. Celebrate him. Father, thank you. Please suspend filling your forms for a moment and lift up your right hand. Suspend filling your form. Lift up your right hand and pray this prayer after me from the depth of your heart. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I know that I'm a sinner. But I know you died for me. On the third day you rose again. Jesus, come into my life. Be my Lord and Savior. Take control of me from this day forward. Now I know that I am born again. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Keep your hand lifted. Father, in the name of Jesus, for every one of these precious ones, they have come to you today. And they have made their confession of faith. Therefore, according to your word, they have become part of your family. Therefore, we ask for grace to keep them working with you all the days of their lives. No turning back in Jesus' precious name. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Congratulations. It's a new day for you. Please complete your forms and return them to the official that is right beside you. Shall we rise on our feet this morning as we receive our Father to take us further in this service. Give Jesus a big hand as he comes. Hallelujah. How many of us have been blessed by the word today? Amen. There are days and there are certain days. Today shall go down in your record as a certain day. Now my daughter shared her testimony that the same day she was praying in the night. At 12 midnight, the father called him, said the money you gave me, I'm going to deposit at the mortuary to put the enemy there. <laughs> Same day, something must answer for you today. <laughs> Within 24 hours, the fig tree dried up. <laughs> and they said, the fig tree without causes is dried up. How quickly? He said, you can do the same thing. How many want a 24-hour visitation? <laughs> now, whatever that issue is, and you could see the finger of the enemy there, lift up your two hands and cross it within 24 hours. <laughs> cross it within 24 hours. Your health, your spiritual life, your business, your career, cross it within 24 hours. Today, within 24 hours, cause this mocking fig tree to dry up. 
victory. Dry up. Dry up. Every gang up against your life, against your family, against your career, against your business. Dry up. 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 Ara de suze rote kolia. Berekotiz ala bolange. Agara kote kuro diale zazo. Bebele keri alo sanzala. Balaba, 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 balaba. The battle is over. 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 Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Here it is. Every sentence you deliver today against every agent of the devil after your life, your family, and destiny shall be executed speedily. Therefore, the siege over your health and the source thereof is declared cause today. The siege over your spiritual life, the leakages being caused by the wicked one, the source is declared cause this hour. The siege over your family, over your business, over your career. Whatever represents the finger of the enemy on your life is visited by vengeance today. Is visited by vengeance today. The source of that marital spare. That business fair, that career fair, is visited by divine vengeance today. <laughs> Isaiah 63 verse 4, For the day of vengeance is in my heart, because the year of my redeemed has come. Your year has come. The camp of your enemy shall be visited with vengeance. In the name of Jesus. As you partake of this communion today, whatever could not molest Jesus, whatever could not assault Jesus, whatever cannot cause Jesus, has no more power over your life. As you partake of this communion, you shall be empowered to live like Christ. To command dominion like Christ. Wherever your name is mentioned for evil, the judgment thunder of God will strike. The church of Christ is an unassortable stone. He's a stone in Zion. You come against it, you are broken to pieces. He falls on you, you are grinding to powder. Every gang up against this church by any agent of the devil is brought down today. Every one agent involved collapses today. Because for a member of this church, every gang up against your life crashes today. Every gang up against your family, your business, your career crashes today. As the Lord liveth, within seven days, you will hear news. You will hear news. You will hear news. You will hear news. Yeah. 
one of us go to his office and corporate office, maybe fourth or fifth level, I don't know, and two red-headed lizards were walking side by side like marriage from the room, from the office, and the colleagues around helped to kill them. Immediately after that, the boss came to his office, forgive me, forgive me, forgive me, and started removing his clothes, started removing his clothes. In Lagos here, they rushed him to Arrow. There he died. The wife came, please forgive me. Everyone involved in your case has died. Please forgive me, please forgive me. And she also died. And see the humorous God, the same seat that the man that died vacated, he was appointed to take it. From this moment, every gang up against your destiny shall be put to open shame. In the name of Jesus. The other side of God we answer in your favor today. We don't only serve a savior God, we also serve a killer God. The Lord kill it and make it alive. He bring it down to the grave and he bring it up. Today, the other side of God, we answer in the camp of your enemy. So shall it be. <laughs> Lift up your two hands. Whatever you desire from the Lord's table right now, let the stewards take their position. Whatever you desire from the Lord's table, now take it, take it, take it, take it. You are to be empowered to live like Jesus. That's the mission. That's the ministry. The mystery behind the Lord's table. Whatever can handle Jesus can't handle you anymore. 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 In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. As you partake of this table today, the seal of your exemption is established. And you are declared from henceforth untouchable, uncursable. Unenchantable, yeah. unmolestable, yeah. indestructible. Yeah. Within seven days, you will hear news. Yeah. News of devastation in the camp of your enemy. Yeah. News of divine crash in the camp of your enemy. And so shall it be. Yeah. This step is declared the flesh and the blood of Jesus. Yeah. We partake of it today as a seal of covering against the wickedness of the wicked. Yeah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Empower every one of us to live like you from henceforth. Yeah. Whatever can handle you can handle us anymore. Yeah. Whatever can touch you can touch us anymore. Yeah. In Jesus' precious name, yeah. every sickness is healed. Every oppression is caused. Every destiny here is released. Please get seated, partake of the Lord's table, praying fervently on your way to partake of it, prophesying on your way back from it, and expect it to happen. Expectation is what gives value to your supplication and intercession. Expect for it to happen and expect it right now. Everybody's calling on God. Oh Lord God, unto whom vengeance belongeth. Show yourself, show yourself, show yourself, show yourself, show yourself. I believe in your other side. I take advantage of your other side today.
to silence my enemies forever. The wickedness of the wicked must come to an end in my life today. The wickedness of the wicked must come to an end in my life today. Come and lift up your voices and call down your portion. Today is a certain day, a day to be much remembered. Call down your portion. Satanic seed over my life is over today. Judgment is answering the camp of my enemy. The God of vengeance is showing himself. The God of vengeance is showing himself on my behalf today. Today is my day at last. My day of freedom is finally here. My day of freedom is finally here. No more crawling, no more struggling, no more stagnation, no more frustration. The God of vengeance is answering my favor today. There is devastation in the camp of my enemy. There is devastation today in the camp of my enemy. Every siege over my life is over. Over finally, finally over. Over finally, finally over. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody's praying. Somebody's making declarations. Somebody's enforcing his own re release. Enfor the kingdom of God suffered the violence. The violence taken it by force. Enough is enough. 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 The battle is over today. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Come on, make bold declaration. I am free at last. I'm free forever. I'm free at last. I'm free forever. Thou shalt not suffer a wish to live. Every agent of the devil beings bewitching your destiny must come down today. They must go down today. They must go down today. Thou shalt not suffer a wish to live. 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 Thou shall not allow a witch to survive. You shall not allow a witch to survive. Every age of the devil bewitching your destiny must go down today. The Lord kill it and make it alive. He bring it down to the grave and bring it up. Engage the other side of God for your liberty. Engage the other side of God for your liberty. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Come on, sing that victory song. Got the 
victory. Hey. Victory today is mine. Victory. Victory. Victory today is mine. I told Satan. You are going to sing that song two minutes more and you sing it prophetically because today is your day. I said today is your day. You are prophesying with that song. Victory is mine today. Satan, your hold is finished. Your siege is over. I'm free forever. Are you ready to sing it? Sing it like people who know that their victory has finally come. Come on now. Victory, victory is mine. Stop me, hey, hey, I told Satan, get there behind me, victory, victory, victory today, it's mine, victory, victory, and I told Satan, get there behind me, victory, victory, victory today. Give the Lord the big, big clap offering, everybody. Give the Lord the big, big clap offering, everybody. In Jesus' precious name, we have celebrated God. Get back home again today and celebrate your victory. Go and do what? Celebrate your victory. And then you'll be executing the judgment that is written. This honor of all his sins. You will be honored with the vengeance acts of God this time. Yeah. Within seven days, you will hear new. Yeah. The testimonies of your release will be in the open. Yeah. Please get seated one minute before we share the goodness. We have four items today for um, distribution. Ushers must have done justice to that. Have you received your copies? If you haven't received, please signify and raise your hands. And ushers will be there. So many people have not received. So please, ushers, move in very fast. The first one, specially packaged for you, is celebrating the God of vengeance at work in our midst. This is to fortify your faith in the God of vengeance. This is to experience the other side of God in your favor. Abandoned testimonies, very humbling testimonies are here. Your own will be the next. Then Operation Andrew, um, 2017, the third Sunday of every month is our Operation Andrew week. And what is Operation Andrew? It's all about ensuring that you bring one soul to Christ. Honor Jesus by obeying him. One soul to Christ on our Operation Andrew Sunday, which is the third Sunday of every month. And that is this Sunday. So please ensure you engage with that and go through this. It is every month of the year, the third week. It's our Operation Andrew week where you pray and reach out to the point that you ensure that someone follows you to church the following Sunday for their own escape and breakthroughs. Jesus is Lord. And then also we have 
um, wonders of engaging of souls. Why are we so committed to this? You'll find it here. Wonders of engaging of souls, the blessings are also are true to you as you engage and why we need to do that. You leave the harvest on the field, the boss of the earth will chop them up. We must get them to the point of preservation in Jesus' name. And then, of course, we have the flyers for next Sunday, Operation Open Doors, or Covenant Day of Open Doors. Please ensure you go through the testimonies and use that to advertise Jesus and bring someone with you to church on Sunday. Praise God. Praise God. Is somebody here excited? Please stand to your feet. Amen. They had some little uh, technical issues at the power station. That's why the air conditions are not on, but they're working on it. They'll be true any moment. And then um, you'll not experience this again. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Shame on the devil. Amen. Everything that followed you here today that is not of God, you see them no more again forever. You see them no more again forever. All the host of Egypt that you see today, you see them no more again forever. This will be your week of God of vengeance testimonies. Someone as his enemy gave up the ghost. The same day, she received three jobs. Same day. Same day. As your enemy goes down, your destiny opens up. As your enemy goes down, your destiny opens up. Lift up those two hands. The race for 2017 is on and people are already on the field. In the name of Jesus, you will not miss your prize. Everybody is on the field hunting after souls for Jesus. Pray, kingdom advancement prayer. This week will be a most fruitful week for you. How many believe to come with someone at least, one person at least this coming Sunday? There shall be no room in the end. This place shall be overpacked on Sunday. The third service shall be explosive on Sunday. All the tents will not be enough to accommodate the people. People will be standing outside here because of your obedience. I was out with my team yesterday and we got 174 souls for Jesus. And they've been coming in in their number in the first and second service. This coming Sunday, multitude will follow you. Go in peace. Now let's share the goodness of the Lord in fellowship, everybody, surely. God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall be in peace of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. My case is different. Because I'm a redeemed of the Lord. It's a covenant child. What affects others is not permitted to affect me. Congratulations. Congratulate your neighbor. Congratulate your neighbor right there on your right and on your left. Jesus is Lord. Let's clear the place now.